Another episode of Rightly Divide the Truth with the Lions of Zion. I'm Brother Elijah, and with me I have Brother Raphael. All right, today's title of the class is called Deuteronomy 28 The Curses. Deuteronomy 28 The Curses. Why are the so called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, which are the Israelites today, why are we an oppressed people? Why are we at the bottom, right? Why do we get shot down the street? on tape, and there's still no justice, right? Why do we fill up the prison systems? Why is parent plan, uh, Planned Parenthood in our neighborhoods only, right? So we finna go through the scriptures, through the Bible, and explain why, okay? We gonna explain why. But like we always start with 2 Timothy 2 and 15. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 15. Uh -huh. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we're going to rightly divide the word of truth today, okay? Precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little and there a little. We're going to explain to our, our people why are we at the bottom, okay? Why? Okay, it's a reason why. It's not uh, just a coincidence or out of osmosis that we the only people that's at the bottom, right? So-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We are at the bottom. All other nations are in rulership right now, okay? But we not. Why is that, right? Let's get into it. Give me uh, Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Let's start there first. Let's see who the book of Deuteronomy was written to. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1 and verse 1. Uh -huh. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Unto who? All Israel. All Israel, okay? Moses speaking to all Israel. Come on. 
on this side, Jordan, in the wilderness. In the wilderness, okay? We just came out of Egypt, all right? So now Moses is uh, with the Israelites in the wilderness, it's about to do what? Give them the laws, give them the statutes, give them the commandments, okay? So we're about to read uh, some of the commandments or uh, laws or statutes that he gave to the Israelites to keep, okay? Deuteronomy 28, let's start at verse, let's start at verse 1. Let's start at verse 1. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 1. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So Moses is talking to the children of Israel. He says, it shall come to pass, meaning this is going to happen, right? If thou shalt hearken, hearken means to listen diligently. You got to listen diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. What's the voice of the Lord? The Bible, the word of God. Wait, let's prove that. Give me a uh, Psalms 103 and 20. We coming back here. What is the voice of the Lord thy God? Okay, because is, 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 the, is the most high coming down and speaking to us directly? No. Okay. Here's the voice of the Lord. Read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 103 and verse 20. Uh-huh. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, uh -huh. that do his commandments. That do his commandments. Come on. Hearkening unto the voice of his word. Hearkening to what? The voice of his word. Okay. The voice of his word. Okay. That's the, that's the voice of the Lord. The voice is the word of God. Okay. Let's go back. So 28 and 1 again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 1. Come on. And it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. The Israelites, they got to hearken, listen diligently unto the voice of the Lord, the Bible, these commandments. Come on. To observe and to do all his commandments. Some of his commandments. To do all his commandments. All his commandments. Come on. Which I command thee this day. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. You see that? So that was the that was the blessings, right? If we would have kept the commandments, the Lord said he would have put us on high above all nations on the earth. Okay, so you got to ask yourself, are the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans today, which are the Israelites, are we on top? Are we above all nations? Right? Do we have our face on the money? Right? Do we have our own banks, hospitals? No, we don't have those things. Do we have our own military? No. <laughs> okay, so we not above all nations. We not on top. We not ruling right now. Right? We in servitude. That's okay? Right. So obviously we didn't keep the commandments because if we would have, we would have been on top of all nations. Okay? Now here's the flip side, right? Verse 15, let's get into the curses now. Verse 15, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now, Moses said, this is the flip side. If you will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, come on, to observe, to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes. And, and his statutes, okay? So it's just not 10 commandments. You got law, statutes, and commandments, come on. Which I command thee this day. This day. Come that on. all these curses. That what? All these curses. All these what? All these curses. All these curses. Curses. Just, hold on. Curses is not a good thing. Curses is a bad thing coming from the Most High God. That's right. If the Most High God curse you, that's not a good thing. Okay? Read it again. That so, all what? That all these curses. Shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So he said, not only is the curse going to come upon thee, but it's going to overtake thee. Okay, meaning what? You can't escape these curses. That's right. No matter where you go, no matter where you run, no matter where you try to hide, you cannot escape the curses of God. Okay? So now we're going to read some of these curses. Okay? To, to show you who the Israelites are today. And why are we under these curses? Because we broke the commandments, right? Read 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city. He says, curse shall thou be in the city. This is the first curse that Moses told the children of Israel. If you don't keep the commandments, 
The Lord said you're going to be what? Cursed shall thou be in the city. Cursed shall thou be in the city. Okay? How are we, cur how are we cursed in the city going all the way back to slavery, right? All the way back to slavery was cursed in the city. If you tried to leave the plantation without the master say so, you was what? You could be lynched. That's right. You could be hung. You could be castrated and burnt alive. Or another slave master would just take you and say, now nah, you my slave. That's right. I'm, I ain't going to treat you as good as the last master did, right? You was cursed in the city. Now let's bring it up until today, right? Bring it up to today. How we curse in the city? We in the slums and the ghettos. That's right. No matter where you go across the world, no matter if it's in California, New York, Chicago, uh, Florida, my, anywhere in Miami, any one of these states, all across the country, Mexico, Man. okay, Germany, Man. <laughs> Cuba, Haiti, no matter where you go, you find our people, where they at? They in the slums, in the ghettos. They in the worst part of the city. That's right. Okay? So it says we're going to be cursed in the city. Right? Come on. And cursed shall thou be in the field. And now it says you're going to be cursed in the field as well. So take it back to slavery again. Right? How are we cursed in the city? I mean, cursed in the field during slavery. What was we doing? Picking cotton for free. Picking uh, sugar cane. The rice fields. Right? Tobacco. We was doing all that for free. That's free slave labor. That's right. Okay? That's how we was cursed in the field all the way back in slavery days. You would have a they would work a two year old till he died. Okay? It don't matter. As soon as they able to walk, that child was being put into slavery. Look it up. Having to pick all type of cotton, right? It's photos and pictures of that thing. Okay? And you would have to work from what? Sun up to sundown. No pay. That's right. Working for free. That's cursed in the field. Okay, now let's bring it up to today. How are we cursing the field today? Right? We get the worst jobs. Right? We working for minimum wage. We barely can make enough money to provide for our households. Right? We got to work overtime just to make enough. Who, who do you see when you go to the temp services? Who do you see at the temp services? That's our people today. That's right. We curse in the working field as well. Okay? Right. Last hire, first fire. Okay? You can't... Uh, the so-called white man, he can show up late. You show up late, out the door you go. Bring it out. Out the door you go. That's curse in the field today. That's what the Lord says. If we didn't keep the commandments, he was going to curse us in the city and in the field. That's right. Now watch this. Give me Jeremiah 22 and 13. Jeremiah 22 and 13. This is another way of how we curse in the city and in the field. Jeremiah 22 and verse 13. It's the book of Jeremiah chapter 22 and verse 13. Uh -huh. Woe unto him. That buildeth his house by unrighteousness. It says destruction unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness. This is talking about Esau, the so-called white man. He buildeth his house by unrighteousness. Come on. And his chambers by wrong. Uh -huh. That uses his neighbor's service without wages. What does Esau do? Uses his neighbor's service without wages. Without wages. Come on. That giveth him not for his work. That was a curse. Okay, but the most I said, woe unto that man. But guess what? The Lord allowed that to happen. Why? Because we broke the commandments. What were we doing back in the slave days? We was the one building up all the houses. That's right. The, uh, the White House. Everything. Our people built that thing. Okay? they had they had We came over to America, and we worked for 400 years free slave labor. Okay? The whole industrial uh, thing... We did that, right? right? Railroad tracks and all that. Wow. We built that, okay? So we was working for free. Why? Because the most I said that was going to be a curse to the Israelites for breaking the commandments. Let's go back to uh, Deuteronomy 28. Give me uh, 17 now. Verse 17. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. The Lord said what? Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. 
What is that going into? Your wallet, your money, okay? Your basket is what you hold your money in, right? What our 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 pockets are always what leaking? They Man, tighten. Bring it out, right? We can't wait for taxes to come so we can Man, play catch up. Out. The so-called white man, they look at taxes like, oh, that's that's just an extra little money I can save. Mm -hmm. We can go on vacation with that. Yeah. So-called black, Spanish, and Native Americans, we like we need that money to catch up on rent and bills. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> he said, curse shall thy bas curse shall be thy basket. And thy store, right? Because when you when you see uh, so called blacks and Hispanics, when we get stores, what well, usually happens in a few years? Yeah. They close down. They close down. Okay, that's why you see so many owners in one different storefront within ten years. Mm -hmm. You'll see one there for two, another one there for three. Okay, we can never keep the store open, right? Because the Lord said. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store, right? Give me Haggai. Let's go to Haggai chapter 1. Haggai chapter 1. Give me verse, uh, let me see. Give me verse 5, I think I want. Let's start 5 first. Book of Haggai chapter 1 and verse 5. Now therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. That's what the Israelites are supposed to be doing in the last day. Consider your ways, right? Are you walking in the law, statutes, and commandments? Do you want to inherit the kingdom? Or do you want the destruction that's to come to America? Consider no. your ways, right? Come on. Ye have sown much and bring in little. You see that? That's what we do with our jobs. We, we go to these jobs and work. Uh, damn near a hundred hours in two weeks. Man, bring it out, <laughs> right? Man. And it says you have so much, but you only bringing in just a little. Cause guess what? The so-called white man gonna tax that money. Bring it out. You is not getting all that money, okay? The so-called white man need parts of that. So he says you have sown in much, but you bring in just a little, just enough. Come on, ye eat. But ye have not enough. Right, there's never enough uh, food to fill a refrigerator. <laughs> okay, you constantly at the grocery store every two weeks, right? Spending nothing but money, right? Come on. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Uh-huh. Ye clothe, ye clothe you, but there is none warm. There is none warm. The most high clothes us, but there is none warm. Come on. And he that earneth wages earn his wages to put in into a bag with holes. Read that last part again. And he that earneth wages. And he that earneth wages that goes to work, works hard for that money. Come on. Earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Meaning what? You live in check to check. That's right. You, you It says you, you earn his wages to put it into a bag with holes. As soon as you get it, it's gone. Man. Before you get it, you you calculating bills and rent and car note insurance, bills, out. groceries. Man. You calculating all that before you even get the check. That's right. Okay? So it says that you earn his wages to put it into a bag with holes. That's living check to check. That's a curse from the Most High for breaking the commandments. Okay? Go back to uh, Deuteronomy 28. Let me see. Give me verse... Uh, 18 now. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 18. Uh-huh. Curse shall be the fruit of thy body. He says what? Curse shall be the fruit of thy body. Curse shall be the fruit of thy body. What's the fruit of your body? That's talking about your kids. Okay? That's talking about your kids, our kids. Okay? It says, curse shall be the fruit of thy body. Now, what does that mean? Right? Because our kids today, they growing up in a wicked society, right? Our our kids are growing up to be drug dealers, gangbangers, thieves, right. murderers, right? We barely can control our kids these days. Right. The most I said, curse shall be the fruit of thy body. Watch this. Give me second address. Give me second address five and eight. Second address five and eight. Give me that. 
the book of Second Edges, chapter 5 and verse 8. Let's read what it means to be uh, cursed out of the fruit of thy body. Let's, let's read that. There shall be a confusion also in many places. Right. Confusion comes from America, right? That's why it's called Babylon the Great. It's the land of confusion. Come on. And the fire shall be off, sent out again. Right. Destruction is coming to America. Come on. And the wild beasts shall change their places. The wild beasts now are everywhere. They should change their places. You see now in the hoods and the slums, you see eagles and hawks in the hood yes, now. That's right. <laughs> okay. The, everything is out of, out of place, out of control. Come on. And the mistress woman shall bring forth monsters. And what? The, and mistress woman shall bring forth monsters. You see that? Bring forth monsters. Mistress women shall bring forth monsters. Okay? That's what it means when the Most High said, Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. Okay? The mistress women today, they are raising up monsters. That's right. All they know is kill, 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 murder, murder, murder. Hang it up. Okay? They, they bring it up, they raising monsters. They ain't got no control over them today. Okay? So that's a curse from the Most High. Right, they selling drugs to their own people. They, you, you see it more often than now that these young black men is out here killing women now. Man. They killing women and kids now. That's right. They raising up monsters. Okay, go back to Deuteronomy twenty eight. Okay, that's the curse from the Lord. He said, "Yo, curse shall be the fruit of thy body." Okay, read it again. Deuteronomy twenty eight eighteen. Read that verse eighteen. Curse shall be the fruit of thy body. Curse shall be the fruit of thy body. Come on. And the fruit of thy land. And the fruit of thy land. That's colonialism. Right? Because we supposed to be the ones over here prospering off the resources. Okay? The farmland. Everything that's, that this land produces. We supposed to be prospering off of that thing. Right? But he said, curse shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land. That is colonialism today. Okay, give me that in uh, Lamentations real quick. Give me that in Lamentations. Let's, let's show you what that means. Curse shall be the fruit of thy land. Lamentations 5 and verse 2. Give me that. So we, we explained and why are people at the bottom, okay? Deuteronomy 28, the curses, 15 through 68, explains to our people why we at the bottom, okay? Because we have made our God very angry, okay? And these curses are going to be upon us until we repent and keep the commandments of God. That's right. Give me that. The book of Lamentations, chapter 5 and verse 2. Start at 1. Verse 1. Uh-huh. Remember, O Lord. What is come upon us? Uh -huh. Consider and behold our reproach. Right. The, <laughs> right. Just Jeremiah, he lamented to the Lord. Okay. He said, remember what has come upon us, all these curses. Right. And he says, consider and behold our reproach, our correction. Right. Watch this. Read. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our inheritance now. The world is our inheritance. That's right. We're supposed to be ruling the planet Earth. That's right. right. But now it says our inheritance is turned to strangers. Who's the strangers of the land? The so-called white man. Bring it up. The so-called Arab man. The Chinese man. Right? The so-called East Indian man. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Come on. Our houses to aliens. To who? To aliens. So who the real aliens? <laughs> Because don't they call the so-called Mexicans aliens? That's right. But the Bible says our inheritance is turned to strangers, our houses to aliens. That's right. So who's the real alien? The so-called right. white man. He's the real alien to this land. That's right. He need to go back to the Caucasus Mountains. That's right. Okay. This land belongs to the so-called Native Americans. That's right. Okay. Read on. Verse 3. We are orphans and fatherless our mothers are are as widows. Why? Because they came over here and conquered our people and put them into slavery. They killed off all the fathers and the mothers. Right? So it says we are orphans and fatherless. Okay? They came over here 
1492, right? Enslaved the so-called uh, Hispanics, right? Enslaved the so-called Native Americans. Okay, that's why our, it says we are fatherless and we are orphans. Come on. We have drunken our water for money. What we have done now? We have drunken our water for money. We have drunken our water for money. That's right. Okay? This is what the Bible means when it says, Cursed shall be the fruit of thy land. Okay? We have drunken our water now for money. The water that falls free from the sky, we now have to pay for. That's right. We now have to pay for that thing. Okay, if you try to collect rainwater, they will put you in prison. Okay, that's how much the so-called white man has took over this land. Read it again. We have drunken our water for money. Uh huh. Our wood is sold unto us. Our wood now that belongs to us is what? Sold unto us. It's sold now unto us. Okay, this is curses that we reading from God. The Most High God don't play when it comes to these commandments. That's right. You either keep the commandments to live or you break them and die. Bring it out. That's it. Ain't no in between. Okay, read on. Our necks are under persecution. Our necks are under persecution by the so-called white man today. Okay, we can't drive nowhere without being pulled over wondering if we're going to live to see the next day. Bring it out. Our persecution, our necks are under their persecution. Okay, come on. We labor. We labor for them. Come on. And have no rest. No rest. Okay, you you could go to work and before you know it, you sleep and you got to get right back up and go to work. That's right. No rest. Okay, let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. Let's go back. These curses are real, brothers and sisters. That's right. Okay. Give me, uh, let me see. Give me verse 19 now. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 19. Uh-huh. Cursed shall thou be when thou cometh in. When you born, the Lord said you're going to be cursed. Come on. And cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. When you die, you cursed. What? Let's, let's elaborate that on just for a little bit. He says, curse shalt thou be when thou comest in. When you born, you curse. And when you go is out, when you die, you curse. Give me Sirach 41 and 9. Give me Sirach 41 and 9. See, this is what the church ain't teaching our people, right? This is what they're supposed to be teaching. That we are in sin and our God is very angry, upset with us. That's right. Okay, and we are receiving the wrath of God. Okay, that's what our people need to realize. The Most High is killing our people for breaking these commandments. That's right. Read what you got. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 41 and verse 9. Come on. And if ye be born, ye shall be born to a curse. So, to a what? To a curse. You're going to be born to a curse. Curse when you come at then and curse when you go without, right? Come on. And if ye die. If ye die, come on. A curse shall be your portion. A curse is going to be your portion when you die. Because when when most of our people die, what do they leave behind? Nice. Bills. <laughs> nothing. No, nothing to pass down. But nothing but bills and debt. Right? That's, that's, that's the reality for the so-called blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans today. Okay? You dying from the curse. Okay? Let's go back. Deuteronomy 28. Read 19 again. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 19. Cursed shall thou be when thou cometh in. Cursed should you be when you born. Come on. And cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. When you going out, when you die, you cursed. Okay? Give me verse 28. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 28. Uh-huh. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. The Lord shall smite the Israelites with madness. What is that going into? That's going into mental diseases. Okay, that's why you see a lot of our people walking around drunk early in the morning, talking to themselves. Okay, they don't right. know if they're coming or going. Bring it up. The Lord says, I'm going to smite you with madness. Okay, he, he got, the Lord has put a strong delusion on those that don't want to repent. That's right. Okay? You got people walking around thinking they an Egyptian. 
Right? You got people walking around talking about I'm an American Moor. That's right. You just call yourself an American Black. That's all. <laughs> okay? Our people think they deep, but they not. The, only the Most High God is deep. <laughs> okay? So, the Lord says he's going to smite us with madness. Come on. And blindness. And blindness. Right? We can't see. Noon time, high in the day. We can't see. We smitten with blindness. Right? Watch this. We're going to read what that blind is talking about. Read on. And astonishment of heart. And astonishment of heart, right? Because we kill our people for less than nothing. That's you right. step on my shoe, I'll kill you. That's right. Right? You look at me the wrong way, I'll kill you. That's, that's, how right. I, that's the mindset of the black man today. Okay? The Hispanic man today. Okay? We, we are an astonishment to the most high. But watch this. Let's read what that blindness was talking about. Verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind groweth in darkness. He said, the most I said a curse is going to be that we going to grope at noonday, right? When the sun is at its highest peak at noonday, right? We going to still be groping in noonday like the blind gropeth in darkness. Meaning what? We trying to find our way to the truth, but we can't find it. Why? Because we, we, we look into everything else but the Bible. That's we right. going through Christianity. We going through uh, Islam. We going through Buddhism. We mm -hmm. going through uh, Seven Day Adventists. Right? Yeah, we going yeah, through yeah. Jehovah uh, Wickedness. Right? They say Jehovah Witness, but it's really wickedness. That's right. Right? So we try to find our way through all these different religions. Okay? But the Lord says... You're going to be groping that noon day like the blind man grope in darkness. Okay? Come on. And thou shalt not prop, uh, sorry. Read it again. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. You see that? The Lord said you're not going to prosper in your ways. You're going through all these different doctrines, these different religions. The Lord said you are not going to prosper in your ways. That's right. Come on. And thou shalt be only oppressed. And spoiled evermore. You, you say you're going to be oppressed and spoiled, meaning destroyed evermore. Ain't that our people today? Yeah, and right. we are, and aren't we an oppressed people, a depressed people? Okay, what people go through depression more than the so-called black man, yeah. the so-called black woman, the so-called Hispanic and Native American man and woman? Okay, we are an oppressed and depressed people. Come on. And no man shall save thee. And no man is going to save you. Okay? No man is going to save you. We're going we gonna to get dive a little further into that part a little later. No man going to save you. Give me verse 30. Verse 30. Uh-huh. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Now, this should be very familiar. It says, read it again. Thou shalt betroth a wife. Meaning you're going you gonna to be engaged to a wife, right? During slavery, our people was getting engaged. They were still marrying during slavery, right? You're going to be betrothed to a wife, come on. And another man shall lie with her. And the slave master is going to come take her and sleep with your wife. That's been documented. It's put in movies. That's right. Okay? The so-called white man will come take your wife. He drunk. He want to sleep with your wife. Y'all just got married. He don't care about that. The Lord said that's a curse, though. That's, right. that's a curse for breaking the commandments. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Okay? That's put in movies, just so you know. This Bible is talking about you. Bring it out. This Bible is talking about you. Read on. Thou shalt build a house. Right. You, you can build the White House, right? Come on. And thou shalt not dwell therein. Right. We don't live in the, uh, in the White House. That's right. We... <laughs> We, we work today. We build up skyscrapers. Yeah. But we don't dwell in those skyscrapers. That's right. Right? We build up houses for the so-called white man everywhere. But we don't dwell therein. Okay? We got to go right back to the slums and the ghettos yeah. where all the potholes is. <laughs> right? That's where we live at. Yeah. But the so-called white man going to have you build up him a nice house, a big house, and you got to go back to the ghetto. That's right. Come on. Thou shalt plant a vineyard. Thou shalt plant a vineyard. Come on. 
and shall not gather the grapes thereof. Right. You gonna plant you gonna be working in the field for the white man, but you ain't you ain't gonna gather the grapes. You ain't gonna receive the benefits of that. Okay, ain't that what happened during slavery? Right? We was in the in the fields planting all types of grapes and, and, and fruits for the so called white man. Right. But we didn't receive the benefits of that. Okay, well, how do you think they make wine today? That's right. <laughs> from yeah. plant, from grapes and all of that, right? So we do that for the so-called white man and the other nations, but we don't receive the benefits of that. Okay, yeah. the most I said, that's a curse for not keeping the commandments. Now watch this. Give me verse 32 now. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Now this is heavy. Now, this, this should start to open your mind up, okay? This is talking about slavery, brothers and sisters. Just in case you was wondering, this is going into slavery. We at the bottom, okay? The Lord said if we didn't keep the commandments, he was going to put us at the bottom. Slavery. That's right. Okay? Read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. When were our sons and daughters given unto another nation of people. That happened during slavery. How do we know? Because they put it in movies. <laughs> they put it in movies for you to see. I know you've seen 12 Years a Slave, Roots, uh, what else? Give me some more movies. Um, I can't think of no more movies off the top of my head. But we, we know from slave movies, right, that the so-called white man was doing what? Selling our sons and daughters. They will separate the families. Okay? So, you got you to gotta think. This Bible is talking about what? Slavery. Your sons and daughters being given to another nation of people. That's right. Okay? Uh, goodbye, Uncle Tom and movies like yeah, that, right? Yeah. So, uh, the Bible is telling us that what? Slavery happened to our people because of what? We broke the commandments. That's right. Okay, read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Uh -huh. And thine eyes shall look and fail with the longing for them all the day long. You're right. Your eyes going to look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Meaning what? You're going to miss your kids. Once they take your kids, you're going to miss your kids. In the movie 12 Years a Slave, once the woman had her kids took from her, she cried the rest of the whole movie. She cried literally the whole movie, right? Her eyes was failing for longing for her kids, right? But watch this. Come on. And there shall be no might in thine hand. The Bible says there's going to be no might in your hand to get your kids back. Okay? No, no military might. <laughs> we had no uh, military to come... Go get our kids back. That's right. We had no economic might to do that, right? right? Our kids was going to be given to another nation of people, and we couldn't do nothing about it. That's a curse from God for breaking the commandments. Give me 41 now. Verse 41. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 41. To elaborate a little bit on what we just read. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters. Right, you're going to have... Sons and daughters, come on. But thou shalt not enjoy them. He says what? But thou shalt not enjoy them. You're not going to enjoy your kids. Once you have your kids, you're not going to be able to enjoy them. Why? For they shall go into captivity. They shall what? Shall go into captivity. Right. They're going to go into slavery. Okay. They're going to be sold to another nation of people. And you ain't going to be able to get them back. Okay, that's a curse from God. Okay, that's what we're reading in the Bible, brothers and sisters. God put these curses on our people for breaking the commandments. That's, right. that's how serious this Bible is. It's no joke. Okay, people wonder why we went through slavery. We reading it right now. That's right. We reading it right now. Okay, the so-called white man didn't just wake up one day and say, let me go and slay these black people, these, these Native Americans and these Hispanics. Okay, you got to think, why you didn't go and slave the so-called Asian man, right? Why ain't go and slave the, uh, the Arabs? That's right. Okay, he, the most high put the spirit on the so-called white man 
to put us in slavery. And we're going to read that too. Now give me verse 37. Verse 37. Uh-huh. And thou shalt become an astonishment. Now this is another curse. The Lord says what? Thou shalt become an astonishment. Thou shalt become an astonishment. What's an astonishment? Our sisters walking around today with blonde weave in their head trying to look like the so-called white woman. That's right. Right? They, they got pink weave now. Purple weave. Man. Gray weave. Bring it out. Red weave. Orange weave. Green weave. Man. That's an astonishment <laughs> for our women to not like the natural texture and color of their own hair. That's right. Right? They want to perm it and press it to make it lay flat and look like the so-called white woman. Damn. Okay? That's an astonishment. Right? They walking around. They, they in strip clubs. Right? Naked. Giving their body away. That's showing right. off their body for a few dollars. That's an astonishment. Make it up. Right? They go and kill their own kids. Right? Abortions. That's an astonishment to God. Okay, the, for the men, right? They walk around pants sagging, right? <laughs> they walking around no jobs, robbing people, killing people, right? That's an astonishment to God. Okay, so that's a curse. The Lord said, you shall become an astonishment to the other nations. Okay, the other nations going to look at us and be like, why do they kill their own people like that? That's right. <laughs> Why do they hate each other so much? That's an astonishment, right? But that's a curse from God, though. Read on. A proverb. A proverb now. He said, you're going to become an astonishment and a proverb. What's a proverb? A proverb is a wise saying, right? You got the book of Proverbs. Nothing but wise saying from King Solomon, right? So wise sayings today would be black people lazy, Right? Black people don't like to work. Black people, they like chicken and watermelon. Man, right? Uh, they, they say, if what do you say to a Hispanic man in a three-piece suit? Would a defendant please rise? That's a proverb, okay? The other nations look at us that way. Call us niggas. Call us spicks. Right? Okay? Those are proverbs that... The Most High said the other nations would look at us like that, right? Because we don't want to keep the commandments and be the kings and princesses that the Most High called us to be. That's right. Right? Read on. And a byword. And a byword now. What's a byword? A byword is being called anything out of your God-given name, okay? Our last name, our surname supposed to be Israel. That's right. But what do we have now? We have Names like Jenkins and Williams and Jones and, Jones and <laughs> you know, Washington and all these. Those are slave master last names. That's right. Okay? The Most High God called us Israel. That's right. All right? We, we got tribes that we come from. Judah, Benjamin, Levi, Ephraim, Manasseh, Gad, Simeon, Naphtali, Asher. Okay? We, we got tribes that we come from. Okay, but the Lord said for breaking the commandments, we was going to be called now what? African Americans, mm -hmm. niggas, Jamaican. Jamaicans, Dominicans. Uh, Haitians, Dominicans, His, uh, Hispanics, right? Uh, what? Puerto Ricans and Mexicans and Native Americans. Those are all bywords. Those names are not in the Bible. That's right. Okay, the Most High God called us Israelites. That's right. Okay, we come from our forefather Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, therefore making us the Israelites. That's right. Because we descend from our forefather, Israel. Okay, so the Lord said that was going to be a curse for breaking the commandments, right? We was going to become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword, meaning what? Now they call us Gentiles. We got Gentile names. Okay? That's, that's a curse from God. Understand that, brothers and sisters. Now jump down to verse 43. Verse 43. Uh-huh. The stranger that is within that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. Uh-huh. And thou shalt come down very low. Now the stranger. Now we gotta you gotta understand some history. It says, the stranger that is within thee 
shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. Now, what is that going into? Give me Exodus 12. Let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 12. Okay. And uh, give me verse 37. Exodus 12 and 37. We were on 37 and uh, 38. The book of Exodus chapter 12 and verse 37. Now, this is when we was coming out of uh, Egypt. Right? The Exodus. The great Exodus. Right? Come on. And the children of Israel sojourned from Ramses to Sukkot, mm -hmm. about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. So 600,000 on foot that were men besides the children, right? So it was a lot of Israelites coming out of Egypt, correct? Read on, now watch this. And a mixed multitude went up also with them. It said a mixed multitude went up also with Israel coming out of Egypt. Okay, so you had all nations coming out of Egypt with the Israelites because they seen a chance to get out of captivity, right? So when Israel came out and made the great exodus, the other nations followed behind us, okay? So let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. So the stranger that is within thee, now we know who the stranger is. It's talking about the other nations, right, that came behind us out of Egypt. Read. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. Now, the stranger that is within us, right? The mixed multitude. The Lord said a curse would be that the stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. And the Israelites going to come down very low. Meaning what? They going to be at the top in rulership. And we're going to be at the bottom in slavery. That's right. Servitude. Ain't that, ain't that what we in today? That's right. We're in the position of slavery and servitude. Okay? Watch this. Give me Proverbs 22 and 7. Proverbs 22 and 7. Watch this. There's a book of Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 7. Uh-huh. The rich ruleth over the poor. It says what? The rich Ruleth over the poor. The rich ruleth over the poor. Come on. And the borrower and the borrower is servant to the lender. And the and the borrower is servant to the lender. Okay? Meaning what? The roles have been reversed. That's right. We supposed to be ruling the earth, right? Give me that at uh second address six real quick. Let's prove that. Because I keep saying that we supposed to be in rulership, right? The earth, we supposed to be over all nations. Let's prove that real quick. Second edge of six. All I want is, give me uh, 54. Six, we're going to read down a little bit. Second edge of 654, give me that. It's the book of second edge chapter six and verse 54. Uh-huh. And after these, Adam also, whom thou made it Lord of all thy creatures. Right, Adam was made Lord of all thy creatures. Come on. Of him come we all. Of him come we all. All nations come out of Adam, right? All nations, come on. And the people also whom thou hast chosen. Now it says, and the people whom God has chosen, okay, which are the Israelites, so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans today. That's we right. are God's chosen. We also come out of Adam, come on. All this have I spoken before thee, O Lord. Because thou made it the world for our sake. He made what? The world for our sake. You see that? The Most High made the world for the Israelites' sakes. That's right. Meaning what? We supposed to be on top. We supposed to be in rulership, right? We 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 supposed to be laying back, getting served. Man, bring okay. It up. We're not supposed to be doing the serving. That's right. Right, but since we broke the commandments, now we are the servants. Right. Read on. As for the other people. As for the other people, right, come on. Which also come of Adam. Which also come of Adam, meaning the so-called white man, the so-called Arab man, Chinese, Japanese, Africans, uh, the East Indians, right? Those other people, come on. Thou hast said that they are nothing. What did God say? They are nothing. They are nothing to God, okay? 
This is the Holy Bible we read. That's right. The Lord says they are nothing. Come on. But be like unto spittle. They like what? Be like unto spittle. You see that? The Lord says the other nations are like spit to him. Right? Spit that fly out your mouth. That's what the Lord compares the other nations to. Come on. And has likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. Right. The abundance of them, all nations, right? They like a drop that falleth out of a vessel. Meaning, if you got a big bucket of water and you carry in that water and a little drip fall out, you don't care about that drip because you got a whole bucket. That's right. The Lord says the abundance of them are like a drop that falleth out of a vessel. Meaning they nothing to God. That's Read right. on. And now, O oh Lord, behold these heathen. These who? These heathen. These nations, come on. Which have ever been reputed as nothing. They reputation always been as nothing to God. Come on. Has begun to be lords over us. And what? And to devour us. And devour us now. Okay? This is Edris. This is Edris asking the most highlight. If the if the world was made for our sakes, then why is the heathen now, right, begun to be lords over us and to kill us? Okay? The, the Lord is telling us in Deuteronomy 28 why. That's right. Because we broke the commandments. Okay? Go back. Let's go back to Deuteronomy 28. Uh, where was we at? Uh, 43. Give me verse 44 now. Verse 44, mm -hmm. he shall lend to thee. Right, he shall lend to thee, the other nations. Who own the banks today? We don't. <laughs> you, can't, you can't go to the bank and get a loan from Tyrone. That's right. You can't, go, you can't go to the bank and get a loan from a black man. It's going to be the so-called white man. They're going to be asking you, let me uh, get your name and your social security number. Let me run a credit check. He shall lend to thee. Come on. And thou shalt not lend to him. You can't lend to the uh, other nations because we at the bottom. We don't own banks. That's right. Okay, come on. He shall be the head. He shall be the head, meaning the leader, meaning at the top. Come on. And thou shalt be the tail. We're going to be the tail, meaning we're going to be at the bottom. We're going to stay at the bottom. We're in the worst conditions possible. That's right. Right? Come on. Uh, verse 45, read. Moreover, all these curses, all these what, all these curses, uh -huh. shall come upon come upon thee, and shall pursue thee. Shall pursue thee, okay? Meaning you can't escape these curses. That's right. They gonna pursue thee. Come on, and overtake thee, and overtake you. Okay, that means what? These curses are still on us today. That's right. We gonna read that too. Okay, so the Bible says these curses gonna pursue thee. And overtake you. Come on. Till thou be destroyed. Till we be destroyed as a nation. Come on. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Because you didn't want to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. Come on. To keep his commandments. Uh -huh. And his statutes which he commanded thee. Read. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. And for a wonder. And upon thy seed forever. Read it again. And they shall and be. They. Stop right there. It says, and they, meaning what? The curses is the they. And they, meaning the curses, come on. Shall be upon thee. Shall be upon the Israelites, come on. For a sign. For a sign. Okay, what does a sign do? The most I said, the curses are going to be upon the Israelites for a sign. Okay, what does a sign do? Okay, it's an identification marker. It shows you. Uh, where you are? Who? If I'm going to, if I, if I want to go to Walgreens, I look at the sign. It tells me that's Walgreens. Okay. If I want to go give me something to eat, I look at the food place and say, well, that's uh, pick and save. That's how I know that's a grocery store because it tells me pick and save. Right? right. So these curses, right, are a sign to let us know who we are in the last days because we're not African Americans. That's right. We're not black. That's we right. not Africans either. Man, okay. Everybody running around calling themselves Africans, but don't nobody want to uh, wear the bowl in their lip and had a, had their ears pierced, looking crazy. Let cows pee on their head. Everybody want to be African, right? <laughs> but no, the Bible says we are Israelites. Okay. So the Lord said these curses gonna be upon thee for a sign. 
Come on. And for a wonder. And for a wonder. Okay? Meaning, wondering why all these atrocities only happen to our people. That's right. Okay? Why do only our people go through slavery? Right? Why are we at the bottom? Why are we always poor? Why are we always struggling? Come on. And upon thy seed forever. How long? Forever. So that means up until right now, this very second, the curses are upon the Israelites. That's right. Upon thy seed forever. Okay? So the Most High God is letting you know who you are in the last days by what? Reading the curses of Deuteronomy 28. Okay? Read down. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. Right, because we did want to serve the Lord thy God with joyfulness and gladness of heart. Our people don't want to keep the Sabbath day. Not really. Okay? Our people don't want to keep the uh, the Passover, Purim, right? The Feast of Dedication. Excuse me, the Feast of Tabernacles. Our people don't want to keep those high holy days. They want to keep Christmas. That's they want right. to keep Easter. They want to keep yeah. Thanksgiving, right? They want to keep Labor Day and Memorial Day and Good Father's Lord. Day and New yeah. Year's. We're not serving the Lord thy God with joyfulness and gladness of heart when you celebrate pagan holidays. That's right. Okay? That's not biblical. Okay? Read it again. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. And with gladness of heart. With gladness of heart, come on. For the abundance of all things. We just read what the abundance of all things was. The world is the abundance of all things, okay? We just read that the world was made for the Israelite sakes. That's right. That's the abundance of all things, okay? Read on. Therefore, since you don't want to serve the Lord with joyfulness and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, he says, therefore... Come on. Shall thou serve thine enemies? He said you're going to serve who? Your enemies. Thine enemies now. Because you didn't want to serve the Lord. He said you're going to serve your enemies now. Okay. Come on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. Right. The Lord. <laughs> this heavy. The Lord sent our enemies against us. So yes, brothers and sisters. You do have enemies. That's right. The Bible says so. God says so. You have enemies. Okay? And it ain't talking about the devil. Because you serving all nations. Okay? In the one of all things. And we're going to read that right in this scripture. Read it again. Verse 48. Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemies. Enemies, plural with an S, meaning many. Come on. Which the Lord shall send against thee. The Lord sent the enemies against the Israelites for breaking the commandments. Come on. In hunger. In hunger, right? We got to serve our enemies in hunger. Whenever we want food, who do we got to go to? Do we own Walmart? No. Do we own Kroger's? No. Do we own Burger King? Do we own Wendy's, Culver's? Any of these food restaurants you go to. The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans do not own them. That's right. We have to go for them to hunger. Come on. And in thirst. And in thirst. You want a bottle of water, you got to go to the so-called white man. We don't owe Aquafina oh. and Dasani. We don't owe none of that, right? You got to go to them in thirst, right? Meaning what? If you got to pay a water bill, That's who right. do you got to go to? That's right. You got to go to the other nations for that. You got to go to the so-called white man to pay. If you don't pay your water bill, he cutting you off. That's right. Okay. You got to go to them for hunger and in thirst. Come on. And in nakedness. And in nakedness for clothing. We got to go to our enemies for clothing now. Okay. Because you look on the back of your shirt. What do it say? Made in China. <laughs> Made in Taiwan. Right? It ain't made it ain't made by uh by damn Jamie down the block. Okay? It's yeah. made by the so-called white man or the so-called Asian man. The so-called Japanese man, right? So we gotta go for to the other nations in hunger, thirst, and in nakedness. Come on. And in want of all things. And in want of all things. Okay? You want a marriage certificate? You got to go to the so-called white man. If you want a death certificate, 
You got to go to the so-called white man just to right. get buried. That's right. You ain't, you ain't got no death certificate. You can't even bury your own people. That's right. Right? If you want toilet tissue, you got to go to the white man. <laughs> okay? And the want of all things, anything you can think of, you have to go to the enemy to get it. Make it up. Okay? You can't go to your own people and get these things. Why? Because we not at the top. We at the bottom. Okay? We the consumers. Right? Come on. And he, and he, that same enemy that you got to go to for uh, hunger, thirst, and the nakedness, and in the want of all things, that he, that same enemy, come on, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. He shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. We know that only happened to who? Our people. That's right. We reading our, our slavery in the Bible. Make this is prophesied to happen because we didn't keep the commandments. The Lord says he's going to put a yoke of... You can Google yokes of iron. <laughs> okay? The so-called white man ain't going to pop up. You ain't going to see the Chinese man with Bring yokes of iron on his neck. Bring it out. Okay? You only going to see the black man, the black woman with yokes of iron. That's the Hispanic right. man with, with yokes of iron. The Native Americans with yokes of iron on their neck. That's right. That only happened to the Israelites. Come on, read it again. He shall what? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Uh-huh. Until he have destroyed thee. Until he have destroyed thee. Because have he destroyed us physically? No. Because we still here. Right? But how, how, how has he destroyed us? Mentally. In the mind. Right? Because he trained us to do what? Hate each other. Believe in his religions. That's right. Right? Believe in their gods. Okay? He has destroyed us mentally. As a people now, we all over the place. We divided. That's how they do. Divide and conquer. It up. Okay? The Bible says we're supposed to gather ourselves together, O nation not desiring. Give me that real quick. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Real quick. Because the only way we're going to come back as a nation is to gather ourselves together. We can't come back with one as a Muslim, one as a uh, believing in Christianity. That's right. One as a seven-day Adventist, another one as a Jehovah Witness. Check it out. Right? We got to come together as one nation, one mind, one spirit, serving one God. That's right. Okay? And we the Israelites. Okay? Read what you got. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2 and verse 1. Come on. Gather yourselves together. Ye gather together. Uh-huh. O nation not desired. You see that? He says, O nation not desired. We the nation that's not desired on this planet. Okay? The proof is in the pudding. Just turn on your news. Who getting gunned down? That's right. Who are the cops always harassing? Who is uh, Trump trying to build up a wall so the, uh, our brothers and sisters can't come to their own land. That's right. We just read who the real aliens is. Bring it up. Okay? We got to gather ourselves together, old nation, not desire. Our people is, is so in love with the so-called white man. But the Bible says that they are your enemies. Bring it out. They are your enemies. We're supposed to gather ourselves together. Under what? The banner of the Bible. Bring it out. That's it. This is our heritage. This is our customs. This is our culture. Okay? This is our uh, constitution. That's right. You understand? So we got to gather ourselves together because because the white man has destroyed us mentally through slavery. We are destroyed people. Go back. Deuteronomy 28. Give me verse 49. Book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 49. Come on. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. You see that? The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Right? Because when the so-called Native Americans was over here in America, right, the conquistadors had to come from where? Spain. They came from Spain. That's why today our brothers and sisters speak what? Spanish. The conquistadors conquered them. And made them change their language to Spanish now. They were already speaking Hebrew over here. That's why when when uh, Christopher, Christopher Columbus, he came over here to America, he had Hebrew translators with him. 
Okay, because he knew these people over here in America, they speak in Hebrew. So I got to have somebody to translate because they were speaking Spanish. That's not our tongue. Read it again. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. From far. From the end of the earth. From what end of the earth? As swift as the eagle flies. As what? As swift as the eagle flies. As swift as the eagle flies. Okay, so what nation symbol is the eagle? Let's, 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 you got to ask yourself that. What nation symbol is the eagle? It's America. That's right. What do they have on their mail trucks? Man. Man. They got the eagle on their mail trucks. Oh, when man. you go into the uh, court system, what do you see? Everywhere. You see eagles everywhere. Okay, the Lord says he's going to send our enemies from afar, as swift as the eagle flyeth. He's letting you know who the who the uh the, the people that symbolize the eagle. It's the so-called white man today. That's right. Okay? Because it wasn't just the uh, so-called white man, it was uh the conquistadors too. All nation symbol was the eagle. Rome, Greece, okay, Spain, That's Germany, right. all of these countries, they symbol is the eagle. So the Lord says he's going to send them against us for breaking the commandments. Come on. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. It says what? A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. You see that? A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Meaning you, you're not going to, when they come and conquer you, you're not going to understand their language. Okay. That's why I said when they came over here, who was, what was they speaking? Spanish. So they had to have what? Hebrew translator because the Lord says, uh, read that last part, a nation what? A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. A nation whose tongue you are, you, you're not going to understand it. Okay? That's a curse from God for breaking the commandments. That's right. Now watch this. Read on. A nation of fierce continents. They ferocious. They a fierce countenance. Come on. Which shall not regard the person of old. They not going to regard the person of old. Nor show favor to the young. In slavery, they didn't care if you was 60, 70 years old. You was going to pick that cotton till you die. They don't care if you was 2, 3, 4, 5 years old. You're going to pick that cotton. Okay? They don't show favor to the young nor the old. That's right. Okay? This is letting you know who these enemies are. This is letting you know who your enemies are. According to the scriptures, right? Give me verse. Uh, give me verse sixty-four now. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight, and verse sixty-four. Give me sixty-one. Oh. Verse sixty-one. Uh -huh. Also, every sickness and every plague, every sickness and every plague. Come on, which is not written in the book of the law. Uh huh. Then. Them will the Lord bring upon thee uh -huh. until thou be destroyed. Until you be destroyed. Okay, so that's heavy. He says that every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of this law, right? So what sickness is the Lord talking about? HIV, AIDS, that's syphilis, right. gonorrhea, herpes, uh, chlamydia, anything you can think of, right? The Lord says all these sicknesses and plagues which are not written in this book of the law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Okay, so the Lord is not playing with Israel. He said, you break my commandments, I'm going to make sure you get AIDS. Why? Because you don't want to honor marriage. That's right. You want to be you want to be boyfriend and girlfriend. So guess what? You, you keep fornicating, you're going to get AIDS. Stand you're going to get syphilis. You're going to get gonorrhea, okay? The Lord is bringing plagues and sicknesses upon our people until thou be destroyed. Read verse 64 now. Verse 64, come on. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. Right, the Lord said he's going to scatter us among all nations now, okay? Because we broke the commandments through slavery, we will scatter everywhere, right? Every nation, you find Israelites there. Every nation. There's not a place you can go on this planet where you don't find Israelites there. That's right. Come on. 
from the one end of the earth, from one end of the earth, come on, even unto the other, even unto the other end of the earth, we gonna be there, come on, and there and there shall serve, and there thou shalt serve other gods. It says, and there wherever you scatter that, you gonna do what? Serve other gods. You gonna serve other gods. <laughs> the Lord said, when He scatter you, you gonna serve other gods. Now we got our people saying they Muslim, man, right? Yeah. Now you got our people worshiping Allah, a false god, a rock. You bound to the cobblestone now. Bring it up. Right? Now you got our people serving white Jesus. That 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 description ain't in the Bible. That's right. Christ said is not a white man. Bring He's a up. black man according to the Bible. That's right. Okay? You got our people calling themselves uh they serving uh they under Buddhism now. Mm -hmm. Okay? You got our people thinking they Mormons and stuff like that. The Lord said you're going to serve other gods. Come on. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Uh-huh. Even wood and stone. Even what? Wood and stone. The wood and stone. What is that going into? Even wood and stone. What's the wood today? Right? That would be the cross. Okay? That's the cross. It was made out of wood back in the ancient times. So he said, you're going to serve the cross, which is what? Christianity today. That's the right. two biggest religions on earth, the Lord said, you're going to serve it. Wood representing the cross and the stone representing what? Yeah. The Kaaba stone. That's right. Islam and Christianity are the two biggest, bloodiest religions on the earth. Bring it up. Okay? Islam and Christianity. You got... Uh, Islam with the stone, the Kaaba stone, and you got uh, Christianity with the wood, they, the cross. Our people walk around serving with crosses on their neck. They got them tattooed on their body. That's right. right. You got what do Hispanics do? They anytime they pass the church, they mm -hmm. they print doing the sign of the cross. Right. The, the Lord said that's a curse. You gonna serve other gods, wood and stone. Okay? Yes, the Bible is a true book. That's right. Read on. Verse 65. And among these nations. And among these nations where you scatter that, shall thou find no ease. No ease. No ease. You ain't going to find no ease. Come on. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. Neither shall the sole of your foot have rest. You're going to be a working man and a working woman till you die. Come on. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart. A trembling heart now. The Lord says there he's going to give you a trembling heart. Meaning what? You're going to be always in fear. Okay? You can't leave out the door without worrying about if you're going to get robbed or shot. That's right. The Lord said he's going to give you a trembling fear. Come on. And failing of eyes. And failing of eyes. And sorrow of mind. Meaning you're going to be in depression. Dang. Sorrow of mind goes into depression. Okay? A lot of our people today are depressed. Why? Because they break the commandments of God. That's right. Okay, that's a curse from the Lord. He going to give you that spirit of depression. Because the spirit, the fruits of the spirit, one of the fruits of the spirit is to have joy. So if you ain't in the fruits of the spirit, you breaking the commandments. That's why you have a sorrow of mind. That's right. That's why you have a trembling heart and failing of eyes. Okay, come on. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. You see that? Thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. What is that going into, right? Read on. And thou shalt fear day and night. You're going to fear day and night. And shall have no assurance of thy life. You shall what? Have no insurance of thy life. Now, give me uh, Zechariah 11 and 5. Right? Because it says, Thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shall have none assurance of thy life. None assurance. Okay? Read what you got. It's the book of Zechariah, chapter 11 and verse 5. Uh -huh. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. Read it again. Whose possessors. Who are our possessors today? Okay, we just read who our possessors are today. The enemies that put us through slavery, right? You got the so-called white man put us through slavery. The so-called Arab man put us through slavery, right? So-called Chinese, Africans, 
They all had a hand in our slavery at one point in time. That's right. But this scripture here is talking about the so-called white man today. That's Watch right. this. Because he's our possessor in this land. Right? Read it again. Whose possessors slay them. Right. Whose possessors, they kill us. They slay us. Come on. And hold themselves not guilty. They hold themselves not guilty. When they kill us on camera, right, it's seen that they're guilty. What do they say? They go to court and they say, not guilty. That's and what right. is the verdict always, always, they always come out not guilty. That's right. Okay, so the Lord says that's going to be a curse. Your possessors going to kill you and they're going to hold themselves not guilty. So go back. Deuteronomy 28, 66. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. Right, your life going to hang in doubt because your possessors going to be always thinking about killing you. Come on. And thou shalt fear day and night. Right, you can't leave out the house. You don't know if you're going to make it to see the next day. Come on. And shall have none assurance of thy life. Right, because if, if, if you drive and the police pull you over, you see them cherries flashing, your heart beating. You can have license and insurance. Still. Your heart's still going to be beat. Right. None assurance of thy life. Okay? Jump down to 68. Let's get to it. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, this curse right here is the pivotal curse of the whole chapter. That's right. This lets us know for sure, without a doubt, that we are God's chosen people. We are the Israelites. Now watch this. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again uh, with... Go ahead. With ships. The Lord said he's going to bring us into Egypt again with ships. Now, when we came out of Egypt, we walked out of Egypt, right? That's why we had the mixed multitude walking with us, right? Remember, we walked through the Red Sea. When Moses parted the Red Sea, we walked out of Egypt Okay, we didn't have to take ships to get out of Egypt. So the Lord says he's telling us something, what Egypt actually means. The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again, right? Read what you got. The book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. We finna read what Egypt means in the Bible. This precept upon precept, come on. I am the Lord thy God, uh -huh. which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt, come on. Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt is the house of bondage. Okay, why? Because that's where we was in slavery at. Egypt in the Bible is synonymous to bondage, captivity, slavery. Okay, go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Matter of fact, give me Isaiah 30 and 2 real quick. We coming back to uh, Deuteronomy 28. Watch this. That's how you got to know. You, you got to read the Bible. Read the Bible, brothers and sisters. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 2. Come on. That walk to go down into Egypt. Matter of fact, start at 1. I want 1 and 2. Verse 1. Uh -huh. uh, uh, book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 1. Come on. Woe to the rebellious children. You see that? Lord says, woe, destruction unto the rebellious children. He's talking to Israel. Come on. Says the Lord that take counsel. But not of me. You take counsel from all other nations through religion, but not through the Bible. Come on. And that cover with a covering, uh -huh. but not of my spirit. Come on. That they may add sin to sin. Right. That's what our people do. They add sin unto sin. On the Sabbath day, you ain't supposed to buy and sell. What did you do? You go to the store and buy cigarettes and pork. You add sin unto sin. Bring it up. That's what our people love to do. Now watch this. Here's the point. That walk to go down into Egypt. That what? That walk to go down into Egypt. That walk to go down into Egypt. So there you have it. We didn't have to take ships to go into Egypt or out of Egypt. That walk to go down into Egypt. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt That's again. A, hold on. Read it slow. Read it again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Or slavery or bondage, captivity. But how this time? Again with ships. With what? With ships. With cargo slave ships. 
Okay, so the Lord says, I'm going to bring you into slavery again this time, but this time it's going to be what? With ships. With ships. Who went into slavery on cargo slave ships, okay. right? Was packed together like sardines. They got pictures of this stuff. They make movies of this stuff. That's, That's right. only our people. So-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We are the only people that went into slavery on slave ships, had yokes of iron around their neck, their kids were sold unto other nations, right? That's what we read in the Bible. They, these are the signs to let us know who the children of Israel are today, okay? Because it's not the so-called white man that's saying he's Jewish, okay? He wished he was a Jew. That's right. Read it again, 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt. Into slavery. Again with ships. With cargo slave ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Moses said by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Meaning this is the same exact way that I'm telling you is going to happen. That's the exact way it's going to happen. Letting you know that this Bible prophecy came to be what? History now. That's right. Okay, read. That thou shall see it. No more again. It says, thou, Moses said, the Israelites, thou shall see it no more again. What is that it? Right? Because most people, when you ask them, what is our homeland? What is the motherland? What are they going to say? Africa. They naturally just going to say Africa. But Africa has over, Africa has 52 countries in it. Which one do you come from? If you're saying you're from Africa. But we finna read in the Bible what the Lord says the homeland, the motherland is. Read what you got. The book of Galatians chapter 4 and verse 26. But Jerusalem. But who? But Jerusalem. Jerusalem, come on. Which is above is free. Jerusalem is above all other lands. All other lands. The Most High says Jerusalem, which is above, is free. Come on. Which is the mother of us all. What is Jerusalem? The mother of us all. Jerusalem is the mother of us all. Okay, let's go back. So thou shalt see it, meaning Jerusalem, no more again. Okay, that's a curse from God. Because have we been back to Jerusalem as a nation? No. no, of course not. So that's a curse from the Lord. That's how you know this Bible is a true book. Come on. And there, and he's there, right, wherever those ships docked. Because when we got off the slave ships, they was docking in Virginia. They was docking in Mexico. They was docking in Cuba. They was docking in Germany. They was docking in Iraq. They was all across the earth. The Lord says, and there, come on, ye shall be sold Unto your enemies. You shall be sold unto who? Your enemies. No, to your friends. Your enemies. You see that? The word enemy is in the Bible. That's You're going right. to be sold unto your enemies. Okay? Yes. The Israelites have enemies. That's right. Okay? So, no, all nations don't love you. That's the right. The Lord telling you, you're going to be sold unto your enemies. We got some of our brothers over there in Africa right now still being sold by the so-called Arabs That's in slavery. Right. Okay? The Lord says you're going to be sold unto your enemies. Come on. For bond men. For slave men. And bond women. And bond women, meaning slave women. Come on. And no man shall buy you. No man shall save you. Okay? That word buy is an old Quaker word. It means to redeem or save. No man is going to be able to save you. No man is going to be able to redeem you, okay, out of your captivity. Because many people try, right? You got uh, Marcus Garvey, Garvey, uh, Martin Luther King, uh, Soldier of the Truth, Malcolm X, Harriet Tubman, right? All these people tried to get us out of slavery. But no man is going to be able to lift these curses upon the Israelites, but who? Jesus the Christ. That's right. The black Messiah. That's it. You ain't getting up, up from up under these curses. If God put a curse on you, what think, what make you think an ordinary man can, can save you from these curses? That don't even make sense, right? Let's go. Give me Isaiah 42 real quick. I want to read something else before we close out. Isaiah 42 and 22. Let's get that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 40, 
42 and verse 22. Because we was talking about the prisons, right? Who filled the prisons? When you, when you look at our people, we fill the prison systems, right? Watch this. That's Bible prophecy. Book of Isaiah, chapter 42 and verse 22. Uh -huh. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. This is a people, the Israelites. We are robbed of our heritage. We are robbed of our nationality, of our culture, and we are a spoiled people. We are a destroyed people. Remember he said he's going to put the yokes of iron on our neck until thou hast destroyed thee. How are we destroyed? Mentally up here. We destroy people. Come on. They are all of them snared in holes. We are trapped in holes. <laughs> the Lord says, and they are all snared, meaning trapped in holes. Through what? Religion. Okay. Politics. That's right. Voting. Those are all traps. For our people. None of that is going to get you out of oppression. Okay? They got they got the they got our people thinking they can vote their way out of oppression. That's right. How can you vote your way out of oppression when the Lord said you cursed for breaking the commandments? Break it up. Okay? You gotta repent. Okay? Voting ain't gonna get you out of oppression. That's right. You gotta repent and stop doing wickedness. Stop doing evil. Okay, keep the commandments. Keep the Sabbath day holy. How about that? That's right. Right? We are all snared in holes. Come on, watch this. And they are hid in prison houses. Where are the Israelites? Hid in prison houses. We are hid in prison houses. Who fills up the prisons, brothers and sisters? Our people. That's right. Okay, the, the Lord said the Israelites will be hid in prison houses. The, the prison houses are filled with Israelites. Man. Every state you go to. That's right. We are the majority of people in those prisons. Come on. They are for a prey. We are what? For a prey. The Lord says the other nations pray on us. Because what do they do when we go to the prisons? They make us work for damn near free. 25 cents an hour. Right? That's basically <laughs> free. Yeah. Right? They work us in the prisons... And, and get millions off of the things we do. Okay, so the Lord says we are for a prey. Come on. And none delivered. And none delivered us. Right? Come on. For a spoil. We are for a spoil. Come on. And none saith restore. And no nation says what? Restore. They don't say give them the reparations that they deserve. <laughs> the Lord says none saith restore. None saith build back up their communities. All right, let's help these people out. They 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 help build up America for the most part. Okay, we still building up America. Okay, without the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, this country will go. This country will fall. That's right. And we weren't working every day, and we weren't buying and spending every day. That's right. Okay, they they fuel this country off of our dollar. Okay, now give me Isaiah fifty nine. Give me Isaiah fifty nine. And give me verse 1. Come on. Isaiah 59 and 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59 and verse 1. Uh -huh. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save. The Lord can stop this captivity right now. The Lord can send Jesus the Christ and the angels to redeem our people, Right? The Lord hand is not shortened that it cannot say. Come on. Neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. Right, because he's going to hear your prayers if you repent and keep the commandments. The Lord says if you turn your ear away from hearing the law, even your prayer is an abomination. Okay, come on. But your iniquities. But what? But your iniquities. Meaning your sins. Iniquity is sin. Come on. Have separated between you and your God. That's the problem. Your sins have separated you between you and your God. Okay? The Lord has turned his ear away from hearing your prayers now. Because you don't want to repent. You don't want to show no reverence to the Father. You don't want to be obedient to the law, statutes, and commandments. So that has put a separation between you and your God. Come on. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. You see that? Your sins, that's the problem. 
Your sins is the reason that the Lord is putting these curses upon our people today. That's right. Okay, so the Lord is telling us we need to stop sinning and repent. Bring it up. Repent. Give me Luke 1 68. Give me Luke 1 and 68. Let's, let's, let's end it off here. Last scripture. Luke 1 and 68. The book of Luke, chapter 1 and verse 68. Uh-huh. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. It says, blessed be the Lord God of all nations. Of Israel. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Come on. For he has visited and redeemed Israel. His people. His people. He has visited and redeemed, meaning saved his people, the Israelites. Come on. And has raised up an horn of salvation for us. For us, that horn of salvation is going to our king, Jesus the Christ. Come on. In the house of his servant, David. Uh-huh. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Now watch this. That we should be saved from our enemies. That we should be what? Saved from our enemies. From our enemies. The same enemies that we read about in Deuteronomy 28 and 68, right? That put the yokes of iron around their neck, right? That sold us, right? He said we're going to be saved from our enemies. Come on. And from the hand of all that hate us. And from the hand of all the other nations that hate us. Okay, so the message here today is that we are under the curses of God until we repent and keep the commandments and the faith of Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah. That's right. Okay, repent, Israel. All right, so with that, I'm going to say shalom, most high Christ bless. This is another episode of Rightly Divide the Word of Truth.